call us to fail, he called us to succeed. We were put on earth to let people know that Jesus Christ heals the sick, delivers the captive, and changes everything. And you don't have to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, nor do you have to compromise. Power. And when Sambalat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the servant, the Amorite, heard of it, that was that he'd come to build the wall, they grieved them exceedingly that there was a man, there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. If, you, if you're going to do something for the benefit of other people, I want to tell you the first thing you're going to find out is he's going to upset people. That's the glory of um, opposition makes you strong. And you've got to learn to fight. And you'll find in verse um, 15, Then went I up by night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned. And the new rulers knew not whither I went or what I did. Neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. Then said I unto them, You see the distress that we are now in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthen their hands for this good work you know it, it, it's a point where you've got to rise up and build would you do service for jesus your king there's power in the blood But it came to pass that when Sambalat heard that we builded the wall, verse 1, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Amorite, was by him and he said even that which they build if a fox go up he shall even break down their stone wall and we're here to build amen god said us to build and so here were the people ah oh, look even if a fox go, people will tell you well you know what use is it what use is study what use is the school what use is it i'll tell you what use it is 
We're building for a future. We're building for a tomorrow. We're building for our children's children. And we don't want to build for them. We're building for what we know God wants us to do. End of story. We're not looking for a short term. We're looking for a long term future. And it's so important to understand what we're doing. We're building for a future. We're building the people of God for a tomorrow. We're not just living for today. Today, God is good. We're looking at a seed that's planted, a seed that's going to flourish. We're looking and we're saying, well, there's going to be a harvest. We're planting. We've seen a harvest, but this is only the beginning. Here, O oh our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So we built, so built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to the work. Don't let people discourage you, mock you, and tell you what can't be. Tell them what you're doing and you can be. They conspired, you'll find, um, all of them together to come up and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. You know, you don't, don't let, watch out don't let people get at you criticism backbiting don't let it be in the church and don't let people from outside discourage your heart what we've set ourselves to do we're going to do they are going to criticize because they don't understand they're going to try and tear down because they don't want you to build up keep building you see that's the purpose of a life we're here to build. God told us to build, we're building. And we won't stop, and we won't stop ever. And it came to pass, verse 15, when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to naught, that we returned all of us to war, everyone unto his work. The, the enemy finds out, you find out what they're up to. And they don't like it when you find out all their counsel. Find out exactly what they're doing. Look, there's nothing new under the sun. The enemy of our souls always tried the same old thing. You'll find, um, if you go on with me to um, uh, chapter 6, opposition, when they can't attack them, then they're trying to get them to compromise. And it, there you are. Then uh, verse 2, Sambalat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messages unto them, saying, I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after this sore, and I answered them, people are always wanting you to stop doing what you're doing and have consultation. People want to, they, they want to say, well, you know, we better dis... We were, we were that close to, to moving from Leicester um, and to, to moving in with my my in-laws just to get help we couldn't cope from day to day it was uh day to day living was was proving impossible but with peter not being well as well and having the two girls it was so tough it was just very very difficult and we knew we had to get down to Penal for the august bank holiday conference and get a miracle because there was no way forward was there well physically i was uh during the time of my illness just very incapable as far as rugby you know rugby and football had come to an end i wasn't able to go down the gym i wasn't able to uh just the normal everyday things that a, a chap of my age would, would do and then the next evening bishop reed spoke on going forward and we knew this was it 
this was it. This was the message. Um, we were just going to race to the front as soon as the call came, and we did. We just, we just get up, get up, let's go. And we got we got to the front first, and um, we, should, we just spoke over both of us. What's wrong with you? I said Emmy. He said Nah. Prayed over me, and then he got to Peter. And after he prayed for Peter, he said to him, Go and get a job and live. And, you know, Peter was walking off and he just got to what me say. Did you hear me? Go and get a job and live. I began to just bit by bit feel better and better and better, stage by stage. And by the time I'd actually been offered to my third interview and been offered a job, um, I was totally healed. To be able to look after the girls on my own, run the house, do all the things a normal wife does is... A miracle in itself. <clears throat> Fantastic. God tells you to do something, isn't it sensible to get on with it? You don't negotiate. God has given us a vision and God has called us to get on with the work. And we're all part of it. And every single one in their families, the children, everyone got to the work and said, hey, I'm part of this. That's what causes things, that's what always causes things to be. Uh, and they try and cause compromise. Now, if they can't get you through compromise, they try slander. <laughs> then sent Sambala, in verse 5, his servant unto me, in like manner the fifth time, with an open letter in his hand, wherein was written, it is a, reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it that thou and the Jews thinks to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king, according to these words. It's amazing, isn't it, how, how they always want to say that a leader's trying to make himself king. A leader's trying to do this, a leader's trying to do that. And so they start trying to bring him, oh, you know, strong leader, this man near Ma. You know, strength. I tell you this, if you don't have a strong leader, you don't go anywhere, anytime. Hmm? The way you know a leader, you find out how many people are following. In, in essence, we need God to lead us, don't we? Amen. We don't need to be leaderless. And, and a church needs leadership. Don't ever think it doesn't. It does. And God made it that way. And... Um, Verse 7, And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem. See, they, they turn around and say, look, all the people, they're kind of lifting you up. They're lifting the work up. They're lifting, uh, and really, you see, they get away from the fact that Nehemiah went there because God laid it on his heart to do a work. God laid it on his heart what to do. They always try and personalize it because it's hard to attack God it's hard to reach him, so they focus in on the people on earth. That's all right. If they're focusing on you, they're admiring you, awkwardly. But they're admiring you. It's admiration. They're just filled with admiration. It's not the kind of admiration you normally expect, but it's admiration. Uh, and that's it. Uh, <laughs> goes on there is a king in Judah and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words come now therefore and let us take counsel together then I sent unto him saying there are no such things done as thou sayest but thou feignest them out of thine own heart look there's a lot of criticism we're always made about success and people feign it out of their own heart if you've got a problem you're going to find fault the problem's not in what's being done, the problem's in you. If you want to find fault, you'll find fault. You'll feign it out of your own heart. You'll see things that don't exist. You really will. If you want to find problems, you'll see it. And I'll tell you what, you'll open your mouth and it'll come out. But it's feigned out of your own heart. It's not true. It's your slant on it. But you have a motive for your slant. Opposition comes then through treachery as well. And you'll find that, um, you know, they're trying to... Um, afterwards I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of oh, Mihaabim, 
who was shut up. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us shut the doors of the temple for they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. And I said, should such a man as I flee, and who is there that, being as I am, would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me, for Tabar and Salabad had hired him. Therefore was he hard that I should be afraid and do so and sin, and that they might have a matter of an evil report that they might reproach me. We're not here to, to bow down to the devil. We're here to tell him, you're finished. We're here to tell him. And here's Nehemiah, and they're trying to terrify him with stories. People always come and tell you, oh, do you know this is going to happen? Do you know that? Oh, this person's going to do this, that person's going to do that. Well, I want to tell you something. No one can do anything. The Lord's in control. Don't have to be afraid. So the wall, verse 15, was finished in the 20 and 5th day of the month. In 50 and 2 days. That's simple, isn't it? It got finished. Why did it get finished? Because all the discouragement, all the things that happened, there was a leader who said, well, I don't care what people say. God has given us a vision and God has called us to get on with the work. And we're all part of it. And every single one in their families, the children, everyone got to the work and said, hey, I'm part of this. That's what caused things, that's what always causes things to be accomplished.